Hello students, today we are going to start with this new chapter called sound. Now this is a term which need not be given any explanation because the sensation of hearing for human beings is because of sound. So what exactly is sound? See sound is a form of energy. So it gives us the sensation of hearing. But what exactly sound is? How is it produced? We are going to know the technical terminologies associated with sound and everything we are going to study in this chapter. Let's start with this thing. The first thing is that the sound is produced due to vibrations of the objects. This is the most important point for the cause because if there is energy, for example, heat is a form of energy. So random vibrational, translational, kinetic motion of molecules or atoms gives the produce, production of heat energy or some sort of chemical exothermic reaction gives us heat energy. So every energy has some source. So here if you are talking about sound energy, so sound energy must be produced by something and it's not like that this energy is being generated out of nothing. Every energy actually takes form of some other energy. So sound energy is derived from some other energy. For example, light to sound, then uh, mechanical to sound and lot of stuff. For electrical energy to sound, this is the most common example you can relate with like loudspeakers, microphones, sound to electrical and electrical to sound conversions are very easily, uh, you can watch it in everyday life. Now, sound is produced due to vibration of objects. Okay, I want to interrupt here and I would like you to note all the key points of this chapter because this is very much of a theoretical chapter. So instead of me explaining you everything, you should make your own notes and that is why I have provided you more notes in this chapter as compared to the other chapters because you have to make your own notes, alright? So sound is a form of energy, sound is produced due to vibration of objects. Right now I am speaking and you are listening. So my speaking part, the sound is coming from the vibration of my vocal cords, which is inside here. Now, vibration is the rapid to and fro movement, which we know. Now a stressed rubber band, this is an activity you can do. You can take a rubber band, stretch it and plug, ask someone to pluck it from center. When it will be done, you can hear the sound, so that vibration produced sound, yes. So this activity, this activity is to show that vibrations produce sound and how does they do so? Strike the prongs of a tuning fork, suppose I have a tuning fork in my hand, I strike it on the table and I place it very near to a hanging bob. Bob is basically a small metal ball, okay. So it is very close to it. So when it start touching it, the vibrations produce continuous sound. So this continuous vibration produced a continuing sound. This is what activity which can be done. Now, how sound propagates, that's the second feature we should know about. That how sound travels from one medium to another. For now, uh, during online conversation, suppose you are doing a video call from your home to your parents or to your grandparents anywhere. The sound basically which is being emitted from your vocal cords is getting tuned into some other form like electrical by microphone. It has been then converted into electromagnetic wave by the various complex machinery present in your mobile phones and then electromagnetic wave is sent in space to other device and there it ends reconverted into more modulated form which is again sound form so loudspeaker takes that energy out. So sound energy is sent due through this channel, the kind of communication channel. But if we generally talk about, suppose you're standing in right in front of me and I'm speaking here, you're listening. So how the sound is traveling? Sound needs a medium to travel and sound here between you and me will be medium would be air. So sound, it's not like that sound travels only in air. Sound travels in all kind of medium, solid, liquid and gas. So sound needs a medium because this is a mechanical wave and mechanical wave, I'll tell you about what's mechanical wave and what is the uh, medium thing. But basically medium is the, the, uh, the whole vacuum filled with, suppose the space filled with something between you and me, if you're present right here. So the space right now is air, so the air is the medium. So solid, liquid and gas, these are three type of mediums so you already know. So sound travels in each medium. When an object vibrates, the particles around the medium vibrates. These particles then collide with the neighboring particles and they start vibrating. And hence, they will start vibrating and they will collide with the particles neighbor to them and they will also start vibrating. This starts kind of chain reaction. So particles starts transmitting their energy from one to another in to and fro movement. 
ओके एंड दैट इज हाउ साउंड ट्रेवल्स दैट इज वाई साउंड नीड्स अ मीडियम फॉर प्रोपेगेशन बिकॉज दे आर ट्रांसमिटिंग द एनर्जी फ्रॉम वन पार्टिकल टू अनदर ओके द डिस्टर्बेंस प्रोड्यूस बाय द वाइब्रेटिंग बॉडी ट्रेवल्स थ्रू मीडियम बट द पार्टिकल्स डू नॉट मूव फॉरवर्ड दम सेल्स दिस इज अगेन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट फॉर एग्जाम्पल कंसिडर दैट दिस प्लेस इज फिल्ड विद वॉटर आई एम थ्रोइंग पेबल्स इन इट ओके रिपल्स विल गेट क्रिएटेड नाउ रिपल्स start moving from center to outward direction they form a wave front like particular circular wave and they'll start moving in outward direction now when that happens do one thing do one activity throw some match sticks on water on stagnant water take your bucket fill it half with water pour some match sticks on it and then drop some pebbles smoothly when the ripples will be formed ripple will cross the mastic mastic will go up and down for a moment but it will not go along the wave because the waves are formed in this way that they only are acting as a medium of transfer of energy they are not transferring themselves outwards they are transferring the energy that is what these particles do even in the propagation of sound if my vocal cords are vibrating which is producing sound then the sound energy is transmitted from this particle which is nearer to my mouth to next particle and then next to next to next and this is how sound travels but the speed at which these vibrations are carried forward from one particle to another is super fast and that is why speed of sound is very fast you know what is speed of sound what is the term which is used for speed of sound okay have you heard that aircraft have used uh, um, they cross a sound barrier called mark speed basically mark is the speed of sound mark 1 mark 2 and 332 330 meter per second generally we use in calculation is a speed of sound in air but as i already told you that sound needs medium for the propagation and if the sound is traveled in a manner that one particle is transferring the energy to neighboring one then the neighboring one and then so on and on so that means if sound is to be traveled in a medium where particles are more densely packed like liquid and solids in gases particles are not densely packed but in solids the particles are super densely packed so sound will travel even faster in solid and that makes sense and that is absolutely true sound travels faster in solid than liquid and then in gases because of the distance between the neighboring particles which are carrying energy from the source to the observer let's move on propagation of sound through air this is how sound propagates now when the particles are transferring the energy these particles which are taking the vibrations forward each particle is not just transferring the energy and putting back to rest no the they are still vibrating because they have some energy so this particle started vibrating this particle started vibrating and they are transferring the energy further but at some point during vibration they are very close to each other and they are very far to each other so these are called compressions and rarefactions compressions when they are very close rarefactions when they are far so <clears throat> let's move on let's read this paragraph this is how i have already explained this is how sound travels in form of compression and rarefactions air is the most common medium through which sound travels when a vibrating object moves forward it pushes and compresses the air in front of it we are talking about the particles of the air medium forming a region of high pressure which is called compression where it is close and comp and the compression moves away from the vibrating object when the vibrating object moves backward because after every compression it will be coming back so it forms a region of low pressure which is called rarefaction that is these are compressions and these are rarefactions as an as the object moves to and fro rapidly it produces a series of compressions and rarefactions in the air which makes the sound to propagate from source to observer now what should be the next point of our study we have to prove whether the sound actually travels in medium or is it just a myth we'll do that activity but first this is a vibrating object producing a series of compression and rarefaction so this is how it is shown you have to start from figure 1 the tuning fork which was given a head started vibrating it produced compression and then compression is followed by rarefaction and then that rarefaction is followed by compression and again rarefaction then compression so this is how it is traveling forward so this is what you have to see compression rarefaction compression rarefaction and so on this is how sound propagates okay 
let's study about the activity which will prove that sound needs a medium for propagation the activity is very simple we have taken an evacuated glass chamber and it is connected to a vacuum pump so that no air is in this glass jar now we have placed an alarm clock in it and when alarm clock goes out that means when the time is hit and starts uh, turning on the alarm we will not hear the sound of alarm because there is no medium to carry that sound energy to the outside the jar right so basically sound needs a medium so glass jar is because we have already evacuated it using the pressure pump of vacuum so there is no gas molecules which are present to take that energy and vibrate it in the media outside the glass right so that is how this proves this activity can be easily done at even at home you can take uh, normal vacuum cleaners which are present at home and offices and you can connect it with a glass jar and put some pebbles in it okay small pebbles and don't take super strong because it will implode not explode implode the glass bottle it is it may be very dangerous so please do it this activity only in the supervision of your adults now when those glass pebbles are shaken you won't hear the sound of the pebbles because you can only feel the shaking of pebbles because of their mechanical action otherwise you won't hear it because there is no gas and there is no air to take that sound out of the medium all right now next sound waves are longitudinal waves this is the point we are coming to there are two type of waves okay first of all what is wave wave are the locus of all points which are at same energy phase now you, this is a definition which is not mentioned here so you should write it down right now waves are the uh, locus locus means group of points set of points so waves are set of points which are at same energy phase reimagine my diagram of suppose this is the water and i am dropping pebbles here this is creating ripples so take each ripple that is a wave okay so wave is basically waves are basically travels in the form of wave front one whole circle would be one wave front so waves are actually the shape and the carrier shape basically i should i should rather say carrier shape of carrying the energy forward so waves are of two types one is called longitudinal one is called transfer waves the difference is in transverse waves suppose this is the direction of propagation of wave then the propo direction of vibration of particles would be perpendicular to it perpendicular to the direction of wave so that is transverse whereas in longitudinal wave if this is the direction of propagation of wave then the direction of vibration of particles would be along the direction of propagation of wave that means if wave is going in this direction the vibration of particles will be in this direction whereas in transverse wave this was the wave and the direction of propagation is perpendicular right so activity is do you know what slinky is slinky is a toy uh, basically very long soft elastic spring and that slinky stretch it and keep giving it repeated pushes so that will create compressions and that compression due to the elastic nature of spring will be forwarding and leaving behind a rarefaction so these compression and rarefaction uh, they follow alternate in order and this is how you can see that this is how sound also travels okay now what are the characteristics of sound waves characteristic we are going to talk about those technical terms which will help us understand this topic better sound waves can be described by its frequency amplitude and speed so these are three main characteristics frequency amplitude and speed now first of all as i just told you that in transverse wave the direction of propagation and vibration of particle are in perpendicular direction this is what it was this is the direction of propagation of wave whereas the direction of uh, vibration of particles perpendicular whereas in longitudinal wave it is same direction and the compressions and rarefaction vibration is in along the same direction so first of all you should know about what is wavelength wavelength is the okay before going to wavelength here you know that these are compressions and rarefactions but here these are called crests and troughs crests are the upper side troughs are the lower side one crust and one trough together makes one complete wavelength so this is one wavelength this is second wavelength up to from here to here this is third wavelength and so on similarly here also one compression plus one rarefaction this is one wavelength okay 
So why um, are we talking about wavelength if we have to study frequency, amplitude and speed? Because they are all interrelated. Now this thing is clear, crust and trough. The distance between two consecutive compressions or two consecutive ray refractions is called wavelength. Distance between two consecutive troughs or two consecutive crust is a wavelength. Or just take one crust and one trough. That is also the wavelength. Frequency. Frequency generally means number of vibrations happening per second. So suppose one, one complete vibration. We have to talk about one complete. So we'll, I'm start, if I'm starting from bottom, I have to finish at where if from if I'll be starting from zero upper zero lower zero so here this is one complete wave so suppose this wave is making this five cycles one cycle means one complete crust and one complete trough or one complete compression and one complete rarefaction one cycle means so suppose this wave is making five cycles in one second so and this cycle is making only three cycles in one second which is of higher frequency number of cycles per second this one okay so short wavelength now how frequency and wavelength are interrelated I told you that distance between two crust is a wavelength here also distance between two crust is a wavelength so here it was higher wavelength but frequency is low where it is lower wavelength but frequency is high so they are inversely proportional frequency I'll give you this uh, diagram frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength and the product of frequency and wavelength is called speed of that wave so you just note down this formula speed is frequency times wavelength now the next part 